Hey folks, so got something uh, got something neat to show you. Take a look at today. Uh, so I have this USB-C charge board here. Uh, this is for the Game Boy Color. The intent is to install an internal charger for a uh, lithium-ion battery mod if you're into that sort of thing. Um, but this is intended to replace the stock DC jack on uh, Game Boy Color. And I, I don't know, I think it's pretty neat, so uh, let's get to it. So when you order one of these things, uh, I think it works out to about 23 bucks uh, if you order from RetroGameRepairShop.com. You can also order directly from the seller, uh, but I believe he's located in Spain. Don't quote me on that. Uh, so if you're in the U.S., shipping might be a little bit longer. But you get the board itself, some wires to install it, and a uh, battery connector uh, because it does not come with a battery. Um, the intent is that you provide your own battery. I already have a battery here that I will be using uh, that has the uh, intended connector on it. Or I thought it did. Nope. I'll have to place on the connector. Oh well. Easy peasy. No problem. Um, but this does require quite a bit of soldering and just a quick heads up. This is probably not an issue with most kits, but I did notice it is a small issue with mine. It looks like this C1 capacitor uh, shifted during the uh, component placement, and this left pad is not soldered on pretty well. Um, it's really not that big of a deal, I think, because this sort of kit requires quite a bit of soldering to install, so it's, you know, it'll take five seconds to just touch up that joint. But just as a heads up, if you have one of these, um, make sure to do a quick visual inspection of all the solder joints, um, because I suspect mine is a one-off, but in case it's not, it's always worth being, uh, being vigilant. So here's today's donor. I have this Game Boy Color. I don't even remember what backlight kit is installed in this, but I know it's one of the uh, older ones with the 9380 screen. Um, seems fine. Pop a game in there. Just double check real quick. We don't want to ruin the thing. I didn't have brightness controls wired up. That's neat. Oh, this is not the ROM that I thought it was. Oh, well. You'd think a cart with uh, that beautiful crystal clear label would have crystal clear on it. All right, good enough. So personally, my preference when it comes to AA consoles is just rechargeable nickel metal hybrid batteries. A couple of IKEA Lada will last you all day and then some. Uh, it's like $7 for a four pack, which means you get two sets of batteries. I think that's the way to go, but I also understand the appeal of having a built-in charge port. All right, that screw post is broken. Nice. This is an aftermarket shell, by the way. I normally like OEM shells better than aftermarket because the aftermarket shells tend to have cracked screw posts. OEM tends to fit better, nonetheless. Okay. Pop that out. Making a mess. Okay. And did I do button controls? I did not. Nice. So that makes this nice and easy. I'll just set this aside for now. Because so we need to focus on this side of the console. I think I will put a new speaker in this too because that is uh, it's kind of messed up. Do that later though. Okay, 
So we need to desolder quite a few things here. Let me go and get my soldering iron warmed up. So we need to remove the power jack and then a few of the components in this area because this goes right there. So we need to remove everything that goes under this board. And I know what at least some of you might be thinking. Um, yes, the pocket does use the exact same power jack. Uh, so yes, technically, this is electrically compatible, but because the jacks are on the other side of the board, um, it's not going to not going to be quite that easy. My understanding is that the gentleman who made this board is working on a pocket version, but that is not this. All right. So to do the desoldering, I'm going to use my solder sucker here. And I'm going to try and be gentle with this jack because I have a Game Boy Pocket that needs one. And this jack is working perfectly otherwise. only downside to these solder suckers is that they get clogged quite frequently. The uh, more expensive like iron based suckers like the Hako, you know the ones that are like $800, those tend to not get clogged but you know they're $800. I got most of the pins mostly desoldered. And we'll set that aside. And now we need to work on the back. So we need to, again, desolder anything that goes under this board. So we need to desolder these EM filters, this fuse, this EM filter, that EM filter, and that capacitor. And I think that diode, but we'll double check that when I get there. So easiest way to do the filters is to just heat it from both sides, and then you can wipe it off. So I have in a big tip with tons of surface area, like this K-series knife tip is handy. And sometimes it's not that easy, so We'll heat one side, add in some solder, heat the other side, add in some solder, and then attack it again, and it comes right off. I'm going to separate these out because I want to save these EM filters. Capacitor I don't care about.
think that's it. Let's double check. Yep, and then we just need to get that diode. And that's it. Alright, should be it. I am going to touch up all these pads with some fresh solder. Get it out of here. And uh, next, we will need to clean it up so that all the pads are nice and flat, like that one is. Uh, that can be done with a solder sucker, but the better tool for this is going to be solder wick. And just run that across like that. That'll absorb all the extra solder. And that should be it. Uh, we still have to remove the uh, LED up here. Let me just take a second to clean up. I want to save these electromag filters for something else. I don't care about that diode or that fuse or that capacitor. Go ahead and get this LED removed too. Uh -oh. I didn't get it sucked quite good enough. Well, we can always just push it out with the soldering iron. That works too. Not really worth saving, but you can. Clean up that hole too now. And that should be it. Now we can go ahead and get this soldered down. Before I do that, I am going to touch up that capacitor that I mentioned. And look at that, all fixed. Alright, so. This, this is actually two different PCBs here. There's this little bottom dangly bit. We can break this off. That is intentional because this replaces the LED. This goes here. And the way we solder that down, I'm going to add solder. this side. Make sure that it is nice and saturated. And I don't know a good way to do this aside from just lining it up, hold your fingy over it, and then Mm 
melt the solder. And that should be good enough. I'm going to touch it up one side at a time. I think it fell off. Nope. We're good. Alright, so it looks like I've actually had the uh, battery tabs off this one before. Probably water damage based off of the scratches. But I think we'll be okay. Alright. Oh, I'm going to clean up all this flux because I won't be able to clean it up once it's uh, assembled. Cotton swab. Isopropyl alcohol. All this flux from the desolder wick. All right, now this goes in just like that. Big old glob of solder there. Then we need to flip it around. Add a glob of solder here. That is basically it. From here it should, should just work. Uh, we probably want to add in the wires so that we can get charging LED indicators. Uh, oh, wow, I completely forgot. We have to, uh, we have to do this side too. There are pads on the flip side of the board. Let me grab, oh, I thought I had one handy. Um, hang on, there we go. So there are these four pads on the bottom of the board that need to be soldered to. Uh, but that's, that's easy. Clary action will take care of that. And this fifth one doesn't need to be soldered down, but might as well make a match. All right. Uh, now 
we get to use the wire that it comes with to solder from there all the way up to here. Unfortunately, it does not come pre-stripped because that would be too easy. Didn't strip off too much because I figured the uh, the insulation would recede as soon as the wire gets heated up, and that is indeed the case. It does not matter which color you solder to which pad; just keep track of what you do. Right. Twist that and bend that back. So, as you can see here, the yellow wire is on positive, orange on C, brown on D. Uh, and I'm going to run this wire back behind the cart slot or the uh, link port. and run it this way and hopefully there's no interference if I run it this way I'll have to double check that but I'm leaving some slack on the wire so that we can route it differently if need be go ahead and get this stripped Alright, and I've already completely forgotten. So yellow is positive, orange is C, brown is D. So 
So we will start with the brown. Wire that up to D. Pretty sure orange was C and then yellow was positive. Yep, that is indeed the case. So we should be all done, more or less. That is the electrical portion of the wiring. Uh, we still need to take care of the mechanical portion. And is this the same connector? No. I doubt I have a battery with the same connector. That would be convenient, wouldn't it? Yeah. That would be convenient. So let us wire this up. This is not going to be a permanent install with this battery, so I am going to half-ass the wiring. And the reason I'm not doing a permanent install with this battery is because this is... I mean, if I was doing a color, I'd do a little bit more than a thousand milliamp hours. But this is what I have handy. And it'll be more than good enough for testing. Let's grab some insulation. So that I don't get a spicy pillow here. I'm just going to insulate both of these. goes well, should be able to just plug that in. Helps if you have the orientation right though. Hmm, kind of expected something to happen for it to light up or something. Uh, Something getting hot? No? Okay, I was just imagining it. I'm sorry, don't freak out. Charges, at the very least. Don't know why it's not flipping on. Let us do some voltage tracing. Is it not turning on because my battery's dead? Because that would do it. I don't know what the low voltage cutoff is on this, but 3.6 volts is kinda low. So I'm gonna let this charge for a few minutes and then we'll try again. I'll be back. Oh, actually before I even go, um, let, me, uh, let me show you 
what this thing pulls as far as current goes. So it is pulling three quarters of an amp, 733 milliamps. So yeah, I'm gonna let this charge for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll come back. All right, so I had quite a few different things going for me as far as why this wasn't working, but it's working now. Uh, so first off, let me unplug this because this does not support play and charge. Um, and I'll walk you through what I did off camera here. Uh, first, I resoldered this capacitor because uh, I think something happened when I soldered it and I was getting continuity on both pads, which is not good. And then second, I had to redo the soldering on the fuse because it turns out I just did very poorly the first time around. Um, and then, now that the battery is actually charged and has a decent level of charge, it turns on. Ta-da! So let's go ahead and get this put back together. Uh, there is going to be some trimming required. I am going to leave the battery hanging out the back because uh, like I said, this is not the battery I plan on actually using with this. I do have a better battery somewhere. Um, I'll have to find it. It is not one of these, but the bigger version of this that I think is like 1500 or 1700 milliamps, but milliamp hours, excuse me. Uh, but that'll fit quite a bit better. Uh, this one, almost as is, fits in the battery compartment, but we do have to trim out this um, this divider here. Uh, but anyway, let's carry on with the install. So that goes in there, and as you can see, there is no trimming we need to do on this side, so we can go ahead and screw this down. All of the trimming that we need to do is on the back half. Also tuck this wire in. It might actually make more sense to throw this wire on the front instead of on the back. But it looks like I can slip it by. Except for right there, but that's fine. In hindsight, we probably want that on the other side so that it goes out the side, but too late. It should fit. We might get lucky. But we are going to have to do some trimming for the, um, for the port here. And I am going to cover it up, and because this is a clear shell, I'm going to mark it from the outside to see what I need to trim. And of course I don't have one handy. Oh, there it is. So there is that. Got it marked off and I am going to actually go trim this out on the Dremel. Uh, because I think that is going to be the easiest and quickest way to trim this. I am also going to trim out some of the battery compartment, and I will need to trim down here as well, but I will do that later, um, because I want to trim this first to get it, to get it fitting, and then we'll see what needs to be trimmed. Take it step by each, so I will be back in just a moment. All right, so I've got the hole trimmed out. It's not my finest work. I'm not very pleased with how that came out, but um, it is what it is. Can't put the material back. Cut twice, measure once, am I right? Uh, anyway, I also went ahead and trimmed out some of the divider in the battery compartment. Uh, I trimmed out as much as I could while leaving the battery compartment intact, which means I can now fit one of these batteries in here. 
Uh, this is a 103040 battery. It is approximately 1200 milliamp hours. And it will go just like that. Nice. Uh, also, this 102050 should fit now too. Actually, it does not. Maybe if I cut the rest of this out, it will. But anyway, anyway. Let's uh, carry on. I'm going to plug that in before I forget. And now we need to trim out this area so that the battery plug can actually fit. So I am going to mark that off. Sharpie because I am going to go drill that out with the uh, rotary tool. So I will be back in just a moment for that too. Uh, but just to recap, I trimmed the uh, divider in the battery compartment and I drilled out a oversized, unfortunately, hole for the USB-C charge port. All right, I think I've got it drilled out nicely. I cut a mostly square hole. Uh, this one actually came out better than I had anticipated. Better than it has any right to, especially compared to the travesty that this one is. But let's go ahead and pop the pair switch in here. Ideally, I would also wire up the touch sensors that I keep neglecting in this console. But uh, I'll save that for another time. calculation I did putting the wire here is dumb so I'm gonna route it this way Ideally, actually, that should go under there. And we'll just keep the excess up there. And now it closes a lot better, but we still need a power switch. What is not lining up now? Ugh. tuck all of the wire into the front. Except for this part down here that I ran on the top. Never mind, I got it. Any fitment issues at this point, I blame on the aftermarket shell.
Ooh, here's something I should have paid better attention to. Am I going to be able to plug that connector in with how much I have trimmed? I don't think I will. That screw post is broken, so I'm not going to bother trying to screw anything into it. My understanding is this still works perfectly fine with these. Oh, guess not. I guess that's one of the compromises. Oh, and I did not trim enough. But there you go. Does not still work with the batteries, um, double A's. So there's really no reason not to completely remove the battery terminals. I think we can mod it to work with both, but if you do that and you try plugging it in to charge it, you're going to have a bad time. But everything is still working, more or less. Working the same as it was at least. Turn that off and then we can charge it. We got the red light. And you just gotta, gotta let it charge. Um, but these batteries, uh, the 103040 cells, do fit with relatively minor modification. They are a bit on the small side. You can get larger cells that should fit a little bit better. Uh, like. Du, 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 du. Where is it? Here it is. Oh, that one's a better example. So, these batteries, uh, this one's actually only 1300 milliamps, I thought it was larger. Uh, but this is a physically better shape for this sort of install. You can see that fits in there much nicer. I gotta remove these spring terminals for it to fit properly though. Uh, we've also got I can get it out of here. And I might just pull the battery off of one of these. Fifteen hundred milliamp, uh, ten thirty forty eight. So it's the same thickness, same width, but it's a little bit longer. It's fifteen hundred milliamp hours that fits much better. This is actually one of the batteries that I was looking for. This is a perfect fit, the ten thirty forty eight. I just got to splice on the proper connector, and uh, well. You guys know how to splice on connectors. I'm not going to use this particular battery because this goes with this battery mod, but um, you get the idea. All right. So that being said, I think I just have a few quick things I want to go over before I leave you guys to install these battery mods at your leisure. Um, <clears throat> One of the concerns I have with these style battery mods is that a lot of people don't understand proper lithium ion battery handling, and I'm sure how it, I handle stuff on video, um, how I, I throw stuff around, I'm sure that's not helping the fact at all. Uh, but I know, I understand the limitations of these cells, and the camera is six inches away from my desk. All right, it, it's it's a lot closer than it looks, and I'm not throwing this stuff nearly as hard as as it looks. Um, but that being said, 
these batteries, you need to take very proper care of them or you're going to have a bad time. By proper care, I mean if you let them discharge, you need to charge them up to a storage charge. Um, so if you run this thing until it's empty, let it charge for at least 20 minutes or so before you like put it away and you're done with it for, you know, if you're, if you're not gonna be using it for more than a month, run it down to empty, charge it for about 20 minutes, then put it away. Don't just leave it empty because batteries do have a constant self discharge. Uh, so the longer you leave it, the lower the voltage is gonna get. If you leave it on empty, it's just gonna keep falling and falling and falling until eventually it'll reach the point of no return and it'll be done and it'll never come back. Um, except sometimes when they do come back, but that is not often and um, it's not always safe because sometimes they come back but then they start bloating up. Um, that is another risk you ha that happens when they run down, when you run them down to empty, they'll start bloating up and expanding, you crack your Game Boy Color, um, or worst case scenario, it explodes. Uh, remember the Galaxy Note 7? Um, same thing. Uh, the culprit for exploding batteries in those consoles, consoles, in those phones, was that there just physically was not enough room for the battery that was installed in there. And so, you know, corners were pinched, uh, there were little imperfections in the cell itself, and so when, where happened, which where does happen, whether you want it to or not, the battery had no room to expand, and so it exploded instead. Uh, when a battery puffs up and expands, that is its fail-safe mode. That is it. That is the safest mode of failure for a battery. When it can't puff up, uh, the pressure still builds up. It has nowhere to go, so it explodes. That's how that works. Um, so that being said, these soft cell lithium batteries need protection. They need to be secured. Um, there can't be any sharps, uh, it can't be poked. You especially can't put holes in these darn things, uh, that sort of stuff. So that being said, I really, really don't recommend mods like this, but, but if you're gonna be, if you're gonna remain unconvinced and you still want one of these mods anyway, then I, I like this one. This is pretty decent. Um, my single only complaint with it so far is that it just doesn't support play and charge. So you gotta you gotta turn it off to charge it. And despite not supporting play and charge, it does not lock out that functionality. So mm, I'm not really happy with that. And yeah, uh, that being said, there is it is not sufficiently dangerous to charge the battery and play simultaneously for a small amount of time. The problem with uh, play and charge, uh, if, you, if you try and charge this while playing and you leave it on the charger while playing, the battery will never complete its charge cycle. It will be stuck in a perpetual cycle of charge, especially with the TP4056 controller that this charge module uses. That is very unhealthy for the life of the battery. Best case scenario, it just reduces the max capacity. Worst case scenario, it causes your battery to fail. So just, just don't. I mean, if, you, if your battery is like really low, it's just about to die, which I believe this does indicate, um, then sure, plug it in, get to a safe spot, turn it off. If you can do that within five minutes, you're probably fine. If it's gonna take longer than that, then Sorry, you're gonna lose some save data. It is what it is. Um, there's just no no safe way to do it with the hardware that is currently implemented. Uh, there are methods to work around that, such as installing a load switching circuit, which will switch the load that the Game Boy is drawing over to um, excess current from the charge cable instead of being powered off the battery. But this charge module does not do that. This is only a charge module. This does not have load switching. Uh, other battery mods, like for example, this one from Retro Modding for the Game Boy Advance, this does have load switching so that you can charge it and play at the same time. That's why there's all this circuitry on the darn thing, because it does actually do something other than charge the battery. Uh, but that being said, I don't know. 
enjoy. I think it's pretty neat. Uh, go ahead and check out the description for links. Uh, if you have any questions, I do try and read every comment, even if I don't have time to respond to all of them. Um, and again, that battery, I think it was 103048. I'll try and find a good supplier for them and throw a link in the description. Um, otherwise, that's all I've got. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I had this thing open. I was doing uh, some work on it, and I decided, you know what, I should probably, should probably add this to the video. Uh, so what I did, I opened this up, I swapped out the speaker. I mean, that's not complicated at all. Uh, that's, that's an easy enough thing to do. Uh, I also pulled the back off, made that hole a little bit bigger so that we can get the connector in nicely. And then, here's the important part, I found the battery that I did actually want to use, so that's what we'll go ahead and install. Uh, but first, um, this mod does basically make it so you can't use uh, alkaline batteries. The battery terminals just aren't connected to anything anymore, so there's literally no point in leaving them. So. Let's yoink them. I'm sure I can use these for uh, something else. already fallen out. This one's probably right behind it. I'm just making sure it's hot. You know, the solder's molten, then I'm applying pressure with the iron. And because this is a clear shell, because it is clear, see-through, I am going to suck off the extra solder. With my wick here. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Pad's a little fucked up. All right. All right. Uh, clean that up. I need some IPA here. Flux out of here. And that should be fine. Alright. While I was in here, I also went ahead and reattached the touch sensors because um, I had them detached because I was swapping out these kits in this particular build quite frequently and I just never reattached them. Uh, but there's no reason they can't be attached now, so they're reattached. Screw it down.
Now we need to remove this from here. Easy peasy. Just take a small pointy object, push the tab down and it'll fall right out. Uh, I am going to pause for a moment and get all the um, debris out of here. I'm just going to spray it with some canned air. And I also need to grab some heat shrink so we can do a proper splice instead of that garbage. All right, all is well, nice and clean. No more uh, debris. Um, well, much less debris. Okay, so then that'll go on here like that. No more battery terminals. We have much more room for the battery, which I found. We'll drop in just like that, and we'll be good. We just have to actually wire it up. So this, I am just going to cut the uh, wires on here instead of desoldering it. Because um, this is too long anyway. When cutting battery wires, you always, 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 always want to do one at a time. Always. And if you can, it's best to stagger them. That way you don't have to worry about it shorting out on anything even accidentally. And I'm fairly certain these are the same gauges of wire, just the battery wire itself has a thicker silicone coating on it. And I have no idea if this one is charged either. Probably not. Because that would be convenient. All right, and so there is a proper way to splice two wires together. Uh, they call it a lineman splice. Um, I recommend doing that when you can, but I really don't think that uh, we need mechanical integrity in this particular application, so I'm just gonna um, just gonna tack them together. Line them up next to each other. And Bob Gianti. The soldering itself is perfectly solid. The only problem is there is very little mechanical integrity for this joint, such that if you were to tug on it, the solder joint would probably give way before the um, rest of it. But there shouldn't ever be a situation where um, force is being applied to this. So, And if there is, if that were to happen, I think I'm okay with the battery getting disconnected. Especially since I staggered the lengths of the uh, the wires. And there we go. That is a mostly proper splice. Much better than that bullshit I did earlier. The only thing we're missing is a power switch. There it is. Now, even though this battery mod basically negates the ability to use uh, regular alkaline double A's, um, I still don't really like cutting out the whole battery compartment. I don't know, that just doesn't, that doesn't jive with me. Um, if you do that, which you certainly can, 
I'm not, I don't, I don't see any cops around, you know. Um, just be aware that you will need to lay something down to actually protect the battery because you don't want it rubbing on the screw heads or any of the other sharp components on the board. plugs in there just trying to tuck the wires in but they're not going there we go And that holds nicely into place. Battery cover clicks in. Uh, I will probably end up installing a little bit of foam on the underside to space it out because that will rattle around in there and that's not the best thing for a batteria. But it is a really good fit um, vertically. Like what's, what's holding this in place is the uh, top and bottom on the uh, folded edges there. So the 103048 batteries are really good choice, I think, for this. And now we have brightness controls. And a much louder speaker. Not because the funny playing speakers are inherently louder, but because that other speaker that I had in there was actually just straight up damaged. The cone on it is warped. But it still worked, so that's what I was using for testing. Well, there we go. Red light means charging, green light means done charging, white light means on. Uh, I don't think there's any other colors. I don't, I don't actually know if it indicates low power. I will have to uh, get back to you on that one. Um, but otherwise, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night. Oh, no, 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 one more thing. I'm sorry, I keep saying, I keep doing that. I keep doing that. This whole last 13 minutes has been, oh, one more thing, one more thing. USB-C host charging. It works perfectly fine on this. So you can plug it in if both sides of your cable look like USB-C. Uh, I didn't screw that down all the way. I'll have to fix that in a moment. Um, but yeah. There you go. You can charge it on basically anything that has a USB-C plug. Anyway, now I'm done. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a fantastic night. I promise no more um, addendums for this video at least.